Are home prices in India poised to come down further? This is the big question every buyer wants an answer to. And there are reports almost every day in media and within the financial circles citing data which points to a big yes as the answer. But ask any top developer of the country and they say absolutely not. There is simply no room to bring down prices. A recent report from Ambit Capital, a very lucid and convincingly written report, has actually let the cat out amongst the pigeons. It says that if the low rental returns of property in top Indian cities is anything to go by, prices of homes in a city like Mumbai could come down by a whopping 50%. This is simply not good news for anyone. The construction activity, if you take as a whole, contributes to nearly half of India's GDP and 30% of its jobs. Any further slowdown of the sector could mean a much lower growth for India's GDP. In the reality debate today, my job is to get to the bottom of all the scaremongering which is going around and get a definitive answer to that big question. Is the trouble over for the housing sector or is it going to come further unglued in the next one to two years. And I couldn't have asked for a better panel. Irfan Razak, Chairman and MD of Prestige Group, joins me from Bangalore. Gitambar Anand, CMD ATS Infrastructure and President Kridai. Lalit Kumar Jain, CMD Kumar Urban Development. Gulam Zia, Executive Director, Knight Frank India. Nishan Single Promoter and Director, Strategy Investor Clinic. Samarjeet Singh, MD India Homes. And Samir Jasuja, CEO and Founder of Prop Equity. Now, before I go on to my panelists, overall four figures to set the stage. Sales have plummeted by over 30% between 2009 and 2014. Unsold inventory has swelled to 7.6 lakh units in 14 top real estate destinations, including Mumbai, Noida, Greater Noida and Gurgaon, and will take 11 to 14 quarters to clear. So 11 is the least and 14 is the longest that people are betting on. There is over 23 months average delay in project execution in all markets of the national capital region. We are talking about NCR and of course, rest of the markets thankfully are slightly lower. New project launches have dropped across the country. Developers in Bengaluru, Chennai, Hyderabad, Navi Mumbai and Greater Noida have all cut their new launches by almost half in the last two years. So these are the four, five key points to keep in mind. Mr. Razak, just every report out there is really scary. Asocham, Ambit Capital, Prop Equity Data, all points to a much bigger storm for India's real estate sector, especially housing and the residential sector. Would you agree that there is reason to be so worried? I'm not scared. Okay. Nor am I worried. Ha, I'm so glad to hear that, sir. <laughs> And uh, you talked about launch, launches, Manisha, like our company in the last four months uh, have zero launches. Mm -hmm. Now, this launches is nothing to do about the market. It's about getting your projects approved. The approval process is so slow uh, it's, and it's getting slower. So, if, if the government really wants the economy to get kick-started, if like you talked about GDP and everything else, this process needs to get speedened up. Uh, now, without launches, obviously, your sales numbers also will be uh, uh, taking a beating, uh, only because you don't have inventory to sell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair point. Let me get the Mumbai view and the West India market view. Uh, Lalit Kumar Jain, would you agree that the launches have slowed down because of the approval process? Mumbai is actually really, really hammered on approvals. New government, there was so much excitement amongst developers. Things aren't turning out or churning out the way you'd expected. Let's be honest about it. I mean, I know it's the beginning of the NDA government, but you can be just totally honest about what's going on. Uh, I beg to differ uh, from the report of Ambit because a generalized uh, uh, comment is always very harmful. What we see in Mumbai and Pune, Mumbai you take entire uh, central Mumbai belt, they have gone gaga in sales, the sales have improvised. The rate also have appreciated, there are other reports and Gulam will confirm that 3 to 5 percent appreciation is average that many reports show. Therefore, I think they are uh, generalizing uh, market condition and predicting a fall in rate uh, is not justified. However, I like to make certain points here. 
that look uh, 12 lakh or whatever numbers and if we have to take average of all the reports around 6 lakh worth of inventory is unsold that means state government central government and corporation losing revenue up to 2 lakh crore you imagine if this money comes to governments at corporation state government and central government that much spending will improvise so i think it's apathy of governments towards this sector and it is self-defeating. Gidambar Anand, what's happening in the NCR market? I mean, Mr. Razak is very confident in Bangalore. The reason why no project new launches are happening is because of slow approvals. But we in NCR do face a problem of a clear slowdown in demand. There's no getting away from that fact which is staring at all of us. Uh, Manisha, two things. You know, firstly, there are so many reports floating around. I don't know which one to actually quote. Uh, surprisingly, one report says in the NCR there are 160,000 units lying unsold. And another report, I, was, I won't quote whose it was. Another report I was reading this morning says there are 100,000 units in the NCR which are lying unsold. So 60,000 units in two reports, that kind of variation. So let me put the record straight. You see, what happens is we must actually understand that today the buyer is more interested in buying a ready property. So how much stock is ready with lock and key and which is lying unsold. Now, if you look at that analysis, JLL has done a very good job. They did one in the NCR, uh, M uh, MMR region. And the figure they came up with was a 3% of the entire stock which is ready for possession is lying unsold, which is not very scary, let me tell you. Similarly, the NCR, most of the stock is under construction. A lot of it is not even, uh, you know, uh, probably offered for uh, sale. So, therefore, you cannot... You know, just say that the entire market is, you know, it's slowing down, uh, the real estate market is not, you know, prices are going to fall. These reports, some or the other make good, uh, make a good read. It's sensational. Let me tell you, in Noida, sales have actually started improving in the last quarter. Okay. Uh, June, historically, is a slow month because everybody goes on a holiday, so the sales really don't happen. Uh, May was very good. Uh, August, sorry, July is also doing very, fairly well. And I think it's going to be a good month. Uh, the only, uh, you know, the only factor is the buyer, the fence sitter is looking for a good deal uh, at a good location with a good developer. All right, Coming so to new launches, mm -hmm. you see, you must understand there's only that much land in a good location. Okay. So already most of the allotments in Noida have already been done. Gurgaon, most of the... Uh, land which is in the periphery of the main city has already been licensed and been offered as a launch. So okay. where is the land? So unless and until we don't have some new uh, master plan coming up or something where developers will go and buy new la uh, land, you know, in bigger quantities, you won't see many new launches happening. All right, fair enough. So there is a buyer preference and a shift towards ready projects. That's what I'm hearing. Nobody wants to take a punt with early stage projects and probably that the industry has to prove itself, especially in North India and Mumbai, many times over that they are have, you know, they are going to deliver in time before that confidence comes. But it's good to know that projects which are ready are being sold. Now, let's get a corroboration from the two big sellers, India Home, Samarjeet, are project selling? Has, has May been good and July been good? So, Manisha, the answer is yes and no, because there's been a complete change in the dynamics of the market. What sells now uh, was not what was selling some time ago. And a lot of what we're selling before is not going to sell now in the future for a very long time. Okay. Let me explain what I mean. Um, buyers are now not looking at buying a financial product in real estate, which is what they were doing before by buying homes and selling them. They are now looking at buying a home. And therefore, the diligence that goes into actually choosing what you buy, the assessment of affordability, the ability to have the money to buy it and to stay invested right through the purchase cycle, all of that has become relevant, which was not relevant before. Okay. So the, the whole pre-launch era of I, I will invest 10 lakh rupees and I will harvest 20 lakh rupees in six months, which is what drove a large segment of the last boom, is a thing of the past and is not coming back. The good news is, however, that there are green shoots. So there is not all bad news. I agree with many of the gentlemen uh, on, who have just commented on that. So if you look at markets that, like Pune, for example, Bangalore is another market, other micro markets in the south, areas of, of uh, you know, in Mumbai, there are areas that are doing well. So you'll find that there is a complete shift away from, you know, trophy properties or investment properties into actual homes. 
and that I think is a trend now which will drive the recovery of the sector. I believe we are a good um, four quarters away from, from seeing happy times. But what is clear is that now the developer must focus on the needs of the end user and not so much look at investors from carrying the mantle until a property is developed. All right. So, so Nishant, you're the other big seller, Countrywide. Tell me what's going on. Now, if I look, I myself have been doing the show for three and a half years now. Daily in and out, I'm looking at real estate data. That's, that's become like morning get up, see the real estate data, sleep with real estate data. So why am I seeing inventory overhang figures in every top micro markets of the country going up? Yes, there are comfortable markets still below the 24 month zone and a lot of Bengaluru markets, Pune markets still fall in that zone. In fact, Hyderabad has suddenly emerged as not a very heavy inventory overhang market. But if I take a national average, inventory overhang has gone up, which essentially means there is some pile up of unsold stock. We cannot deny that. I think all the reports are overemphasizing on slowdown in sales and slowdown in launches. Mm -hmm. One of the main reason for slowdown in sales besides, you know, decline in economy, etc. is the delay in infrastructure projects. For example, if I take example of Gurgaon. KMP and Dwarka Expressway were two major infrastructure projects which got announced in 2007-2008. Okay, they got significantly delayed. If we look at Noida, Eastern Peripheral Expressway got approved by cabinet last week. Uh, delay in announcements of Metro. Uh, we don't even know, uh, people have been banking on announcement of international airport in Noida, that is still in confusion. So, so there were developer promises and there were government promises. Mm -hmm. So buyers relied on both when they took their buying decision. However, from the government side, there has been significant delay in what they had to deliver. So that is one. Slowdown, so slowdown in sales is also a factor of because people were expecting something and did, that didn't happen. Okay, However, fair enough. Over I, last three I would months, corroborate that. Yes. Yeah, over, over last three months, there has been significant movement on these fronts. Whereas International Airport, Eastern Peripheral Expressway, KMP is unclogged, Dwarka Expressway is unclogged, announcement of two or three metro lines in Noida. So now there is significant movement. And that's one of the reasons why sales have recovered since March, like uh, Gitambar also said in April, May and June. That is one of the biggest reasons. There is no other reason. Okay. Second, slowdown in construction. I don't know about other markets, but specifically in NCR, I have been meeting developers since January. And there is a consistent issue that they are still waiting for environmental clearances. The committee got dissolved. It hasn't sat again. And people are ready with contractors. People are ready with money in the bank account, but they are not getting environmental clearances. And they are not able to start construction. Okay. which is also having a big impact on the buyer sentiment because they are thinking that they have been cheated, which is not the case. Oh, okay. Fair enough. All right, Gulam. Now the consultants come in with all the data. Gulam's here. What would you agree with when it comes to panel and interesting points? I mean, approval in delays, infrastructure not taking off, the entire profile of buyer changing, especially in the NCR market, uh, green shoots emerging. Which of these... Would you agree with? Which of these are you not agreeing with? First of all, uh, while we have a, a great panel, uh, pretty much all the top developers from each of these markets, north, south, east, or what, whatever, they are obviously the best of the developers. And I'm sure it reflects on their sales and, uh, and the volumes and the prices also. Okay. Uh, the reality may be slightly different from uh, the perspective that we look at it. The sales have definitely gone down and there is no denying. While it has been going down year on year, it's also a fact that even the first half yearly ending June this year, if I look at it uh, half yearly to half yearly last year and this year, pretty much every market except for Pune has gone down. Well, even Pune is not uh, something where it has grown, but the, but the differential is uh, pretty minuscule, so I would say it is kind of flat. But except for that, look at it this way, Delhi has gone down half. The, uh, what it was last year, same time, it's actually half of that. Okay. Bangalore, about 18% uh, degrowth is still not looking that bad. But then the, 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 the reality remains that the markets have shrunk. And I'm, I'm only talking about sales. While I empathize with the points which many of them are talking about, the delays in permissions, etc. But the delay in permission is, is, I'm sure, the worst in case of Mumbai because of the DPEs and so on. It's not that bad in Bangalore. Yes, I agree in an NCR market, say something like in Noida would have a problem because of green tribunals and so on. However, the inventory infusion also has to keep in mind or has to be seen in the, with the backdrop of delays that are not because of just 
uh, uh, permissions, but also half done projects or, or projects where deliberate delays have been coming in. I'm sure there are lists, a list of developers all over in every market where delays have crept in. Okay. Now, these delays are also essentially looking at how investors or buyers are looking at these projects. And that is where most of these things can be simply explained. That while markets are not yet reciprocating, uh, reciprocating markets are not yet warming up to the schemes that the developers are coming up with. But I'm sure this is something which has to be seen also from right perspective that at least I don't agree that the markets have to crash by 50%. That's something by, by no uh, imagination I could ever imagine that the Bombay prices will come down by 50%. Because at that point of time, I would rather shut my shop and go home and sit. Why would I even be there as a developer? Okay. I find that the statistics are what is causing the 50% drop that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. It is more a statistical calculation based on yield and not really okay. an assessment we will of value. Come to that, somebody. Yeah. In fact, that is what I want to understand. Every international analyst that I speak to says that there is inflation bubble in the real estate market and they use a rental yield parameter. We need to crash that or corroborate that. But that's after the break. A quick viewpoint from Samir before we come back and discuss on where prices could actually go. Samir. Slow down happening, not happening. Uh, Manisha, I think everybody is complicated this whole real estate subject a lot. Hmm. It's very, very simple. First of all, real estate industry is very cyclical. There are going to be ups and there are going to be downs. Okay. Why are there Why downs are happening right now? Why are we making it, such right? a big deal out of it okay. right now? It's very okay. simple. I'm not. I'm hearing these reports and I got to ask these questions. So I think I'll try and day. simplify it for you, you know. Huh. Uh, we've, we've had boom times where there has been no infrastructure. Why are we linking it to infrastructure? The delays have suddenly not started to get, you know, much longer. There were always delays in getting project approvals. It's a pure function of demand and supply. What you have seen in the last four years has been unprecedented supply, which is going to take time to get consumed. And it will take a good, the supply that has come, in, come up in the market has been 10 year supply that has come up in three years. Okay. It's going to take its time to get consumed. Developers in the euphoria launched a bit too much because the sales were happening. Now sales have completely slowed down, so they've got stuck in that cycle because in India, developers need the sales uh, monies to come in to start do construction. So construction is getting delayed and is getting stopped in certain cases. The investor has gone completely out of the market because he doesn't find the risk to return uh, uh, working, out. working out for him right mm. now. Okay. These are the three core reasons why the real estate market is in a slowdown. But needless to say that real estate is probably one of the best asset classes in the country. Five year horizon from now, you will see compounded returns being generated by real estate. It's just the right, getting into the market at the right time, investing for the long term and you'll come out a winner. Okay, I think we should just conclude the discussion and debate here because Samir has given us the closing statement on real estate. But I totally buy that point. I, and, and I think we need to come back and break that myth and all the scaremongering which is happening in terms of pr pr prices likely to come down by 50%. I don't see them happening. There is no data that supports it. But we'll come back and let's let's just break that ambit capital report. Why not? Let's go point by point and just explain to our viewers on why this is so unbelievable. Prices, are they likely to crack further or are green shoots visible? Maybe they won't go up in most of the micro markets will hold steady. That's the big question we want an answer to from all our panelists. So stay with us and we'll be back in just a moment.